Gibi Kaule is my name. Uh, I'm a former international football player of Uganda. So I came from a football family. My passion, love for the game, came because of my family members, my big brothers. So at home, we used to watch a lot of football, you know, football made in Germany. And I used to, uh, uh, I was inspired a lot by the players that were playing in this time in the German league. Of course, uh, I was fan for Eintracht Frankfurt. And uh, we played a lot of football at school, at home. As you grow up, school organization, we had, um, competitions for Kampala district and in this moment my passion for the game was higher then I managed to be recognized and be in the, in the school team and we competed against some of the best schools our closest rival was Chibuli because it had really good players uh, like Mujib Kasule was there he was one of the main men uh, at the school then there was police or Dutch was at police I was on my top competing actually with Gibi. Gibi was in the side of uh, St. Peter's, I was in police. Actually, we used to compete with him. When he scored two, I scored three. When he scored four, I scored two. Then I remember there was uh, uh, Rubaga, Chitebi. They had uh, a lot of good players. Kawempe also, uh, Sekaja was there. So we had a, a really, really stiff competition in primary school. So, and... Uh, uh, of course, with my uh, influence and other players, we managed to um, uh, be champions. I, I remember I was in P7 and we played against uh, uh, Mojibus Chivoli twice. Uh, we beat them 1-0 in the semi-final. We went to the final and we played against uh, Sekajas Kawempe in Nachivubo and we beat them 2-1. It was a, a good game and this is where uh, my competitiveness starts in football. Uh, this was uh, 1988. We were champion in uh, Kampala district uh, primary school. So, and um, of course, I always love to be competitive. I wanted to become somebody because in this moment I had a lot of, not so much, but a little knowledge. Uh, with the experience of watching, um, we were lucky that we used to watch football made in Germany. We were very excited to see players like uh, Karl Heinz Rummenigge in this time, uh, uh, Robesh. These were big players in the league. So, this is where my inspiration starts. Locally, there were so many great, great players that I used to see when my brothers took me to the stadiums, of course, in this moment. You can talk about players like uh, Filippo Mondi, you can talk about uh, players like Tom Luanga, you can talk about so many, all the teams were too strong in this moment. And uh, because I used, to, I used to go to a boarding school, so during my holidays, we used to have time and go watch. My brothers took me to the stadium to watch these big games, especially. I only got the time to watch the big games. Uh, KCC versus Villa, KCC versus Nile. In this moment, all teams were very competitive. There were no small teams. And you would be surprised that uh, Villa versus in Zambia was such a big game and the stadium was always full. Players used to train with a strong heart. It was a pride. You find that during those days, a player would go play in the league or for the national team. His weakness, he would go and say, please, I don't have ball control. Let me go on my own. Uh, go and do these things before the really time comes for that. It is not with the, the current youth. The league was so competitive and also the caliber of players. Uh, they were very well built players and uh, technically gifted. And by that time we used to bring even Congolese, Zazaki, Toto. So they attract people when they are playing well. When you are playing well, the fans will come back. You don't have to call fans come. By that time, we didn't call fans come. We just played. And this explains why um, in that moment, there was not so much money in the league. 
I found the express in 1992 when the fan was so small. But when we started playing, playing in 1992, 94, 93, fun came back with themselves. They want good football. That's all. So I was inspired locally by the stars here at home. They were, there was no difference actually when I looked at the players back home and the players that I saw on TV. For me, it was no difference. And uh, Uganda has been always. It has boasted of very, very good players from the generations b before. Uh, you know, Majid Masi was a very good player. When we are going to play Vida, we should say, hey, how? Who is going to mark Majid Musi? We could think all the, the, the night. Because by that time we had Inkada, we had, uh, was the one who going to mark him, but Musi was, was special. They mark him, he put his head on the house. So, he, he, he was a very good man. Football was big in a country. I remember in this time, um, Chibuli Secondary School was one of the big houses, like football houses in uh, Ugandan football, Chibuli Secondary School, St. Henry's Chitovu. So now, uh, the school teams, especially like Chibuli, uh, we used to play these games at Chibuli Dam, because for example, when we used to go and play against uh, Mojib Kasule's Chibuli Dam, and uh, the, the, the players for the senior team, the Chibuli Secondary School, they used to come and watch. You know, Chibuli versus St. Peter's was a big, big game. You can imagine that Chibuli Secondary School, the, especially the players, were supporting St. Peter's because of the brand of football that we were playing. And for me, um, Chibuli Dem was very strong, and uh, Chitebi. And uh, I remember the most memorable match was when we beat Chibuli because we knew if we are not, if Mojibus Chibuli was not champion, we were going to be champion. So it was a really, really good feeling. And uh, when we won this game, we had fans from uh, Chibuli Technical, we had fans from Chibuli um, Secondary School and they started booking us to go to secondary school. And that, that explains why after my primary seven, I went to Chibuli, Dem, Chibuli Secondary School. I was so desperate to play football. And when I went to uh, uh, Chibuli Secondary School, it was, I immediately, you know, I was a household name in the inter-house competitions. And uh, again, I dominated my house and uh, the game tutor then, Mr. Sentongo Badru, started seeing that Chibuli had got, um, had got uh, a future player for the school. However, because of, you know, it was a boarding school, and uh, I wanted to have some kind of liberty also that I can, you know, because I saw professional players in that moment that were playing in the league, they always had to go to clubs, which was not going to be possible if I was in the boarding school. So when my parents realized that I was focused on football because the whole senior one I was playing a lot of football. So they decided to take me to Namasagali College, which was very far. And once I realized that the dream of football was going away, I, in my second, in my first two terms in Namasagali College, they were very difficult because I hardly played football. And uh, we only played football in only one term. And we used to make these long distances from the school to go to Kamoli to play maybe one game. You, you basically played about four games in a year. It was so tough for me and um, I had to escape from school to come back and uh, I say to my mom, I have to try to, I want to study because, you know, education was very basic for me, but football also was, I was looking at it as a priority. So we had a good discussion with my mom. I said, look, I will do my best and uh, I want to play football. I want to go to a football, footballing school and play football. So because I had very good marks in my primary school, I was the best student in primary school uh, in education. I was the best student in my PLE for the school. So she agreed. Then uh, I went to Rubaga boys. And uh, during one game, Rubaga was playing against Lubiri. Lubiri beat us 6-2, but I scored the two goals. 
And uh, after the game, the game's master and uh, some former Luviri players, I remember that Dan Intale was in Luviri in this time, he was the captain. He saw me and they came and spoke to me. They said, we have seen your potential and uh, you scoring two goals against this school is such a big, big achievement. We want to give you a bursary so that you come to Luviri so you can add value to this school. And this is how I move to Luviri Secondary School. And from then, the rest is history in uh, the next competitions like the Coca-Cola in 93, I was the best player. And uh, in Barara, that was in Barara. And uh, of course, 94, we were champions in Lira, I was top scorer as well. 95, I was top scorer in Bali. And of course, with my uh, uh, footballing record in Luviri, I managed to um, get a lot of recognition from the management of the school. And this is the moment that I started also thinking about some young players that were not opportune to go to school. And I started giving uh, advice to the, um, to the headmaster that we need to try to bring some young men that want to play football. And I got a couple of scholarships for, for many young players. Gibe, he scouted me. He saw me when I was playing. He said, hey, Titi, first come, how are you? I said, I'm fine. Ah, as you are playing very well, do you study? I say no, I don't study. I say why? I say my parents they cannot afford school fees. Gibe, he came, he make me what I am. Because being coming from disadvantaged community, he took me, he gave me a scholarship, which is not easy. He didn't know me. He would have said no, I'm going to take it, but you bring some whatever. But because of the insight and also the talent to say hi. This talent, he, he to Erua, he to pass, let me, now that scouting, technical, you know, insight. When Jigibi joined Luviri SS, actually he's the one who came to me and told me, you know, James, I want to take you to, to join our school. Which school? And he told me, Luviri SS. And I said, there's no problem. Because that side, he was a, he was a sports, sports prefect. He had the access. He went and talked to the sports, sports teacher. They came to me, they spoke to me about the scholarship. Then I agreed, I went there for the scholarship. We started playing together in the same school. We won a lot of trophy. Then we separated in, in club level. We joined the Miracle, I joined police. So I was so lucky in this time, one moment that I was training at the field. And uh, I remember um, the legend coach Lewa Dra had an opportunity to coach it was during the clan time, there was a clan and uh, yes, and uh, Coach Lewa Dra was a coach of uh, a clan called Ngali. Actually, it was their debut season. When I saw him, I think technically and tactically, he was good on the ball. And that is where I started, I got interested in him. Then I said, okay, now the talent, the skill is there. And then the endurance is not there. And then I was uh, combining it to both of them. So I kept coming and I realized that he gave more responsibility to myself, even as much as I was very young. And uh, I realized also as a father figure, he kept on calling my name and giving me more, more responsibility on the team. He switched me playing very various positions and I felt good in myself that uh, such a you know such a big name in Ugandan football he gave me a lot of attention and i i felt so good and i loved coming back to train with this clan until when the competition started uh, later we because we trained for like i think two months and uh, there were a lot of problems because i didn't belong to this clan but the coach was so determined to make sure that i stay on the team because i was the youngest a kid on the team and uh, he wanted to take the best out of my talent he saw that I had potential and I remember also that um, there was a lot of strife within the team the senior players were saying oh no this this young guy is gonna make us to lose points 
Then the coach insisted. He said he has to be on the team. He must be on the team. He must be on the team. And this persistence, uh, once the game time came, went to Nachivubo. And I remember the officials of the clan came close to coach. They said, look, I think you have uh, blended the youngster so well, but because we are playing a big team, uh, we were playing against uh, Mpindi clan, which had uh, national team players. Uh, I remember these players, the Mogalu brothers, uh, there was uh, Raphael, then there was um, uh, the other one that played for the national team. Uh, he was playing left back and coach had assigned me to play right wing. So basically I was playing against the national team player and it was uh, uh, such a tough job. So however the coach called me, put me by the side and called me to uh, on the shoulder and he said, Gibby, I'm going to give you, um, I'm going to introduce you when I see the situation on the field. And uh, he told me that this is different from what we're doing in Mengo at the field. This is a big field. There are fans. The fans are crazy. So you must watch, sit on the bench and see what they are doing. When you go onto the field, I want you to enjoy yourself. I want you to do everything and I want you to follow my instructions the way you have been doing at the training session. So it didn't take long and the game uh, minutes passed by and we conceded a goal and coach was so angry and he said I can't wait any longer. He said give me warm up. I went into the field and then I, uh, I immediately started to make an impact and uh, everybody became excited when I'm taking on uh, the great uh, Mogalu national team left back and this is where now um, you know a lot of attention because in this moment always the clubs after training all the coaches came to the stadium and this is why uh, the late uh, David Oti you know contacted the coach and he said I like this youngster and uh, Ali Chitonsa also gave good remarks to the coach coach Lewa Dra as well said he is my boy and I've groomed him to this level and this is why he's looking the way he is because he was with me for two months and uh, this is where now the late David Oti takes me on and signs me in Express and uh, I start my career, my journey in uh, Ugandan football clubs. And the other thing with him, he was disciplined. He wanted the game, he wanted to learn, that's why he got it very well. Otherwise, there were others of his type, since they didn't have interest, they dropped on the way. So he continued with his. He saw an opportunity where where somebody makes a mistake, yeah, football is full of mistakes. You tell him that is a coaching point. You missed that point because you did this. If you use this part of the body, it would be better. And he accepted that thing. He didn't take it as um, degrading him. That's where he learned much on that. Express was a big team playing in the African competitions. So, I convinced the coach that I need game time. It's better you loan me and uh, I play with my mates because Express was uh, a bit of, uh, it was a, uh, three, four levels, you know. He was playing well in, the, in, our, in, in our practice. But as I told you, the a lot of people, there were a lot of our strikers was Tamale, Zazaki, they were good, he was good. But that one at an age, you are better than him. So I told him, your, your future is bright. So that's why we loaned him to Miracle. So he can, he can play there and the people can see him. During my two years in Miracle Center, I, I played a big role, scored a lot of goals to help them to uh, promotion. And uh, this is when we came and uh, the first two years, Miracle Center, we beat Villa, we beat KCC, and we were giant killers. And he came and played against us. He almost scored it. <laughs> yeah. You see, Miracle collected a crop of talent. Talented, purely talented and skilled players. That's why we saw the Dunning Tales, the Diga Watsons. I think even players like Golola, the coach now for for Vipers and uh, Chitende, that crop which believed in playing real football, which is so entertaining, much, they were not going just for, 
kick and run type of football, but they were playing total football. So Gibe grew in those in those cycles. When I was in Miracle, I told Mr. Butindo, because he was our coach, I told Mr. Butindo there is a boy. He has got everything. He's a complete player. He told me he's a complete player. So why don't you bring him? Then he called, told me, so tomorrow, call that boy to train with us. When you train with Miracle, ah, Mr. Butindo told me, this is a very good player. So from today, he talked with him. From today, you have to train with the team. So that's where we started. He even gave me license. So we trained with him. I played with him. Sometimes he didn't have boots. Then I had to give him boots. Yeah, because at that time, by that time I had boots, three pairs of boots. So I decided to give one boot to him because of his talent. And he was disciplined. There is one coach, Steven Gaige Molinde, he is late. So Villa started sending him to scout and see how I performed in Coca-Cola and all these tournaments. Uh, he came to Miracle Games. And uh, I remember the manager of Villa then, um, Mr. Tusharu Pereira, uh, bankrolled me on his, uh, on, on his player list, players that he wanted to bring to Villa. I went to Villa, it's obvious that uh, the late Timothy Ayeko, when he signed me, he assigned me to create goals and score goals. And my first season in Villa, I was the best player in Villa 1996, and uh, I scored a lot of goals against all the big clubs. KCC scored two goals. I scored against Umeme. UEB was a very tough team. The previous year, they beat Villa three goals to nil. And uh, I went to uh, Bogembe, a very difficult place. I destroyed them. Uh, I remember that uh, there was a that was a very good football at Wankoko and uh, the match was abandoned because Jibe was going to score us and they had close our goal which we scored at it was, it was, it was cancelled then after that uh, they wanted him a free kick there hey we saw him Jibe was going I had to enter the pitch <laughs> eh, that's, the, that's the memory I, I remember about him. Wherever he could go, he could score. Uh, that was a great year for me in Villa. I got called up in the national team. Fortunately enough, he was, uh, was the coach of Villa. And Asman Drubova was also our coach for the national team. So no, he joined us when we are going to play. Kaffa in Sudan, 96. We are someone again with Gibi. We went to the Sekafa in Sudan. Uh, unfortunately, that time we made the trip, me and him, and we are very happy. Then I remember he told me that, I still remember the word he told me that, we should not lose hope, we shall make it. Now we are here. We went to Sudan and we won the trophy. It was my first trophy with the national team. We won the Sekafa and we won, uh, it was uh, in Kenya. The final. 96, of course I had to work hard so that uh, I, you know, I, I make the grade and it was easy for me. I was in Villa and uh, I was the main player in Villa in 1996 and at the end of the season I scored 12 goals. Uh, my maiden season at a big club and my experience was great. We went to Sudan, it was so hot and uh, unfortunately also in Sudan while I was there I got a little sick. But uh, it was great because the team, we went until the finals and uh, I have my medal at home, gold medal. So I am proud that, uh, you know, at such an age, young age, you know, I, I achieved what I achieved. He had good athleticism in him. He could run fast with the ball and with some power, strength to force out the defenders. So actually he was a very good striker. But you know, that's the time also when players were quite many. Uh, we had the goal poachers like Andrew Fimbo Mukasa. So he was among those you could see with the high, high sense of stri good strikers. When we came back from the Sekafa after we were champions, KCC came and they continued to talk to me. 
so it was uh, a bit of a difficult time. He had a lot of sense at goal poaching. He was actually a good goal poacher and he could convert uh, uh, none chances to goals. When we got a new coach, uh, a lot of fans, because I was in university and uh, you know, I didn't train as regularly as I used to train because I was in my you know, first year and it was a bit difficult. And uh, a lot of people said, oh no, he wanted to go to KCC, he doesn't want to play. So 97, I must say that it was not such a great year like 96 because of so many commitments at school and my training programs also. And uh, that prompted my decision to go to KCC because KCC still showed that they still wanted me. So then I uh, crossed over to uh, KCC in 98. Uh, yeah, I had a good time in KCC. Uh, but it was not a team for me. Uh, when I went to KCC, it was really, it did not suit my ambition. I always wanted to, uh, you know, be in a place, in a team that really wanted to win, like Villa. Villa always wanted to win. And uh, I realized in KCC it was not the same. And uh, this is why I switched. In 1999, I went to Police FC and uh, Coach Steven Gaige and the later Boa said, Gibby, you come to Police, we do something big there. I knew him as 1990 when I was coaching Nile Brewers. 90, I saw him, I don't know, he was playing somewhere. Then I kept quiet, so I had to go and ask somebody. Where does that boy stay? He was staying all the Kampala, up there. Then the guy called, told me he stays there. So I went there slowly, slowly. I told him, uh, you see the Fiat car? Said, yes. Can I talk to you? Said, Who are you? Because I'm coach Paul Oma. Can the just say? So he came down, he talked, 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 but I think with him he had another purpose. Very fast player, ball control shooting, ball control, whatever, it was fantastic. But I think he had another mind. Waited for him. The under, I think it was the under something, under 17 something. He never turned up. I had been to the national team and I had, you know, I played in Villa, biggest club. It was my dream to play in Villa. And uh, in three months when I went to police, of course, uh, I wanted to be the best player in the league. I wanted to show uh, also my fans that trusted me, that, you know, always supported me. I wanted to show them that uh, my talent, you know, for me to show my ability, I, it doesn't mean that I should be in a big team. And indeed, I had the best scoring rate. I, I proved that. I proved that I was uh, the best striker in my generation. And uh, when you see the statistics, my scoring statistics, in Polis, I scored uh, 19 goals in 18 games. And I scored, I scored a goal in every game. In fact, that was a very good performance. In fact, the police, police in police's history, it's only Gibe, Massa, and Mwanga who has who have scored more than 50 goals, 15 goals in a season. So his record is still there. He was a good player, young and genetic, could play, could pass anyway. And I had uh, a dream to better my career. Of course, uh, I used to read a lot of magazine, reading about young, young players in Africa, like Mohamed Kalon, who made it, you know, from Lebanon, then he goes to uh, Italy, you know. So I wanted to be like those players, and I was desperate. So this is where I, uh, st I stopped, I banned on the league, because I was earning 60,000. Every sixth of the month, I was getting 60,000 just like any police officer. Uh, but maybe he was a bit, bit, bit not patient because he was rushing every time. Eh? His ambition was to go professional. That's why you see, even up to now, the way he does his things. 
for his is very aggressive. He doesn't waste time. He wants things to work out then and then. I chose, I remember I was in a national team and um, we were preparing to play against Liberia win camp and I made the, the toughest decision of my life to decide to go turn professional. That was motivation to go outside. Even outside to go, say you are playing in Kenya. It was really a motivation for the young ones. So I arrived Joma Cosmos. I remember it was a good moment because uh, you know Joma was expecting me. And uh, in the club, I remember also Benjani Murawari was just coming from Zimbabwe, so we arrived in the same moment. So I signed this uh, after three days. Joma was happy, and uh, it was the same moment that uh, Uganda was in the All African Games. Uh, All African Games, I remember, and uh, uh, Willie Chambadi later joined me at Cosmos. So I signed a contract with Jomo, Sono, Jomo Cosmos for three years. And uh, yeah, this is where everything starts. When it comes to ball possession skills, he was better than people who were bigger than him. You know, people, somebody like you say, let him come and kill him. You come, he puts the ball there, you are running on this side. I think it was the type of where people admired his skills of that. Yeah, in South Africa, I remember that uh, I had to... Uh, it was difficult when I signed for Cosmos because I had to come back and uh, get my release. And uh, it took me one year before police released me, so it was a little bit difficult. And uh, the boss was paying me, and, uh, but, I, yeah, but I was not playing. So the second year, same. The coach was, uh, the, the boss was paying me, Mr. Jomo Sono. He, he wanted to take me abroad. I had no papers. I had no, I had no work permit. I couldn't play. So, and I was very impatient. I wanted to take care of my family. And, uh, you know. So this is when I made a decision that, uh, look, there's nothing for me back home. And uh, I knew that obviously I was young. I, I wanted to play, but I wanted to play also with winning something, you know, winning something for my family. I knew that there was no record for me to come and prove back home. And I knew that I, I, I had already the, the knowledge that, uh, of course, so many players that played for the national team would go all the way and uh, do everything for the country. But at the end of the day, they will not uh, still uh, get their financial freedom. I also still knew I had uh, uh, a lot of fans that wanted me to break the record, uh, Jimmy Chilunda's record, because I was in best position to break it. You know, I've just after 19 games, 18 games, I scored 19 goals, and uh, my statistics already. The, 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 I was remaining with only 10 goals, and I still had 21 games to play. But my life, my future, were more important to me than the record. So I decided to go for life and. Uh, while I was in South Africa, as I said, I was impatient. Uh, Mr. Jomosono could not wait uh, two years. I have no work permits and Benjani has gone to Europe and I should have gone to Europe perhaps. This is when I made a decision and uh, I said I cannot. Uh, you know, I had a lot of contacts with people that uh, wanted to work with me. I was very, very ready to become an entrepreneur in sports management and players. And I was so, so determined because the conditions that I went to South Africa were so bad. You know, traveling on the road and spending nights without food, spending nights in the park. And uh, once in a while, you know, especially when I was crossing over to Mozambique, uh, you, know, you, you know, you find thugs in the night and they want to steal all your belongings. It was very difficult. And, close to losing your life, but it was worth it because I was chasing something that I loved. And uh, I said that I want to help players because I don't want them to be in the same position that I was in. That with my talent, I didn't have no agent. I didn't have anybody to try to push my career to the next level. So I made a decision that I want to try to help players to make sure that they can be you know, they can be supported to achieve their dreams. And uh, this became my next goal uh, because I felt like 
I had to make up for every dream that I dreamed. I had to make sure that somebody else can achieve it. And this is the reason why I became uh, what I am. And I, I, I passionately want to help players that want to play football because in the time that I wanted to achieve big dreams, I didn't have no one. In, it, was not, uh, it was not the culture in Uganda. Ugandan players were happy to play here because the support, the fans, everything around, you know, the clubs, the environment was so good that people were happy to stay here and play until, you know, at the end of their careers. But, uh, you know, this does not really reflect to what is happening today and the conditions that the, the, the former players are dying, you know. So I made that decision and I don't regret it. I'm happy and uh, I'm happy to help players. And uh, yes.